You'll put her low. Yeah. I'll quiet her down a little bit more. Okay. Um, reference there is a computer message. We're recording. Okay. So, wasn't talking about anybody in class. Um, so, we have this quiz problem. I'll uh, find the equation of these five lines. Okay. Now, this really isn't too bad. Uh, you've got off to a fairly decent start here. Uh, the line through 35. First of all, you can use the y equals mx plus b form. We know that b is negative 3 because y-intercept occurs at 0, negative 3. Y-intercept is therefore negative 3. Okay. The slope, well, we do have to find the slope. And I, I, I saw in most of the quiz papers pretty good graph. And we had like zero, negative three here. So here is the line y equals negative three. And I really do recommend that you draw the vertical and horizontal lines and label them the vertical and horizontal lines through any point. It'll reinforce things that are very important. It'll reinforce the meanings of these lines. Um, and I think it'll be quite beneficial to you if, you, if everybody will do that. And people don't seem to think about doing that, partly because the open math videos don't do it. And a lot of what you're doing, uh, you know, about half the problems have videos with them. You're seeing those videos. So you know, there's reason that people don't do this, but I really recommend that you do. Uh, you'll do better with this stuff if you do as I ask. I won't penalize you if you don't, but uh, unless I specifically ask for those lines, and I might. Okay, then two five, let's just say is up to it. Okay, so here's, let's say x equals two, and here's a line with y equals five. These lines can be very helpful. Now, what you need is to figure out the slope. After you put the information that you have on the graph, and the information that you're given allows you to put two points on the graph, then you simply sketch this fundamental triangle. You can use a formula if you want, but uh, I think you're going to learn it better if you do it the way I'm saying here. Okay. In order to get from this point to this point, you got to move plus two in this direction. And plus seven in this direction. Oh, so, sorry, plus eight. I saw that two down there. Kind of lost my mind. Okay. So it's plus two here and plus eight here. Now, this is the rise. This is the run. So that the slope is rise over run. equals 8 over 2 equals 4. And then I put a 4. And I don't even have to use the word slope if I understand that a number in the box next to a line segment indicates the slope of that line segment. It's a very efficient way of visually representing what's going on here. So I do <coughs> recommend it. And I might well require that a, a, a labeled fundamental triangle. Uh, but we haven't stressed it yet still. I recommend that you construct it exactly the way I have when you construct a slope between two lines. It doesn't take much longer. How long does it take to draw a horizontal dotted line and label it? Yeah, a couple of seconds. So it takes you 10 seconds or less to draw and label these lines, unless you got to stop and think about what those lines are. And if you got to stop and think about what those lines are, then you really 
You need to keep doing it until you don't really have to stop and think. It's just kind of automatic. So he thinks about what these lines mean, where they are, and so forth. Well, anyway, you get slope. Draw the figure. The slope is four. You can also use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I don't like the idea of using the formula without knowing what it means. Okay? And this tells you what it means. I'll say also. <laughs> okay. You know, y is 5 here and y is the negative 3 here. Excuse me. Allergy season getting a bit of an early start, I think. Uh, this kind of kicked up on Friday. Friday night, it rained and I woke up Sunday with no symptoms at all. And then gradually they came back. So possible I've got a cold. Uh, that's, that's a rare occurrence. I haven't had one in years. Okay, X2 minus X, but I do get allergy problems. Okay, X2 minus X1 then. Okay. Well, X1 is zero and X2 is two. Now we know X1 is zero. If we wanted to be really complete about this, it wouldn't hurt to label the Y axis X equals zero. Okay. It's then two minus zero, which equals eight over two, which is four. You get it from the formula, that's handy, that's quick, but it doesn't show us anything. And if you don't show us anything, then you're probably not gonna connect it well and remember it as well when you have it on a test. So I recommend this picture, okay? However, with the formula, if you're in a hurry, this will get the answer for you, just this and this. Okay, so all right, M equals four. Just connect the slope with that M, but we should know that very well by now. Okay, still not a bad idea to write it out. Okay, well, it'd be four X plus negative three, and that's just four X minus three. And then we should be able to check this. If we plug zero in for x, we get negative three. So the point zero, negative three, and it also kind of neglected to label the points. Okay, if x equals zero, y does equal negative three. That's very easy to see because four times zero is zero, it leaves you with negative three. If y equals two, then x should be five. Well, y is two, four times two is eight, and you subtract three, you get five. So just quickly. Now, I would really recommend you write out y equals four times zero minus three equals negative three. And when x is two, y equals four times two minus three equals five. I didn't have room to write that out, but I really highly recommend that you write things out because you remember the better if you do. And there's some memory. On this, you know, most people only got through a couple of problems, got a pretty good start in a couple of problems, but they didn't get to the last three problems. All these you should have been able to do in 10 minutes. Okay. But, you know, again, the first two shows, you know, it's progress. And people did, you know, again, people are making hundreds in their homework, but coming in not able to solve the problems. Okay. Now, coming in able to solve some of the problems, and that's progress. Okay, so I'm not displeased with that, but you really want to prepare yourself where you know that you can answer any kind of problem you see on the homework. Okay, then you really 
start building a foundation that'll lead you to success later on in pre-calculus. Okay. And that's, that's really our goal here, is to prepare you to be able to do the thinking and the operations and the pictures and everything so that you can be successful in pre-calculus. Okay. So, second problem. We got two points. Okay, what do we, what, what do, we do with two points? Well, I'm just going to start out by putting the information we have on the graph. Okay, let's see. X is negative 3. X equals 7. If negative 3 is here, it's kind of reasonable. 7 should be there. It should have been a little further to the right. But we're trying to do this more or less accurately. But we're not going to be compulsive about labeling these things accurate. Okay, so set them should have been a little further to the right. Still, that looks fairly reasonable. Okay, and sometimes you want to be more precise, but we'll work on that when the time comes. Okay, then we have y values negative 5 and 9. So I'll start with the biggest y value, which is 9. If y equals 9 here, where's negative 5? Well, it's a little more than half of 9, so negative 5 probably ought to be Maybe here. If you draw these lines, it gives you a better picture. And everything else makes more sense if you think in terms of the picture. Again, there's a formula. You can use a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and get the slope. That's not difficult. Uh, but the picture sticks better than the formula does for most people. Okay, then we simply say, okay, if I'm going to go from the left to right, left point to the right point, I've got to go over to the right, obviously, if I'm going from left to right. And in this case, I've got to go up, as I did over here. Okay, now you have your run. Now we can write the calculation. It's 7 minus negative 3. We're going from here to here. So we subtract where we start from where we end. And we get positive 10. And that matches our picture. It's 10 units from here to here. And you can figure that out easily. It's three units here and seven units there. So that's 10 units. You want to think that. You want to see that on the graph. OK. Now we go from y equals negative 5 to y equals 9. So the rise, we don't need a formula to see what the rise is. We don't need a formula to see what the run is. We have the picture and we can use common sense. So the rise is going to be 9 minus negative 5, which was 14. Again, we check that against common sense. It's five units here, nine units here. Now, the five should have been a little low, but we're not going to worry about that. We've got the rise and we've got the run. And now we can write the slope. And I'm going to write it out completely slow equals right to divided by run equals 14 over 10 equals 1.4. And I'll put that, or actually I want to say that's 7 fifths <coughs> over 1.4. Now 11 fifths is exact. 1.4 turns out to be exact as well. Sometimes when you write the fraction, you can't write this exactly. Well, you can write a form of it exactly, but uh, uh, it doesn't terminate. Okay, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to put. I prefer the fraction mainly because people tend to be very weak. With fractions, or you know, I'm doing all this stuff, and I just realized that half of what I got here wasn't on the screen. Okay, well, it should be straightforward. Let me recapitulate a little bit. Um, we got the two points: negative three five and uh, seven nine. So here's the point: 
negative three five. And here's the point seven nine. Things are getting a little cluttered up here, but there it is. We draw the line x equals negative three, the line x equals seven. And as I said before, seven should have been a little through, a little right, because two of these makes that. That's more like where x equals six ought to be. Still not too bad. And then we put y equals nine up here, the highest point, uh, and the one with the biggest number. Make sure we've got room, get everything on the graph. And uh, y equals negative five. And it's, I hope it was negative three. Yeah, it was negative three, negative five. Um, so I didn't put the negative in front of my five. I just wrote this down, but there it is. Okay. And then we draw the dotted lines and label them and so forth. And then we go from here to here to here. From starting at the leftmost point, we go right and we got to go up. Okay. Then we figure the run and we figure the rise. And then up here, we make a little note. The slope is rise over run seven fifths or 1.4. And I'm in the box where the slope goes, according to my convention, this is my convention, but I think it's useful. Uh, we have seven fifths up here, okay? I don't want to put the decimal equivalent. I want to put the fraction because it's exact, okay? If you round this off, if it was seven thirds, you could maybe round it off to 2.3. All right, well, that would be incorrect. It would not be exact. And if you use that 2.3 in your formula, it's going to give you erroneous results. Okay, so we do the actual rise divided by the actual run. Well, we did that here, and then we reduced it to get an equivalent fraction. In terms of the fraction, then we see by the picture. M equals seven fifths. <laughs> now, I say y m equals y two minus y one over x two minus x one. Perfectly good formula, but again. If you use it without the meaning, uh, you're, you're not going to understand things that are really important to understand. So that equals, and then I got a few dots here because you can do the same thing I did here with the numbers, and you get seven fifths. Okay. Um, now, we still have to find the equation for the line. Well, you got a formula for the equation for the line. I'm actually going to write the formula down, but I'm going to draw a picture that shows you what the formula means because the picture is more informative than the formula. Formula gets you there. And on a test, if I don't ask you for the picture and you don't draw the picture and you get the formula right, it's okay. Now, if you get the formula wrong and haven't drawn the picture, you know, you're out of luck. If you get the formula wrong, but you've drawn the picture and show me and understand the reason, you're going to get at least half credit, okay? Which is a whole lot better than nothing. Half credit's kind of passing, barely passing, but it's not going to hurt you as much as getting zero on the problem. So your formula is um, Y2 minus Y1 equals M times X2 minus X1. I believe that's the way they stated the formula. I actually prefer get myself. I actually prefer this form because It tells you what it means, okay? And it's the same. I mean, if you divide both sides here by x2 minus x1, you get this. If you multiply both sides of the definition of the slope by x2 minus x1, you get the formula. So you don't even need a separate formula if you know the formula for slope. And if you know the meaning of the formula for slope, then you pull everything together and you understand everything much better. 
Right. And all this says is that if you've got a point on the graph, and let's just say you got this point on the graph, okay? So let's say this is your point in this case. Let me back up a second. I wrote this in terms of y2 and y1, okay? And all this is true. This really isn't the formula for your straight line because, well, you'll see in a minute, okay? I'm gonna call this point x1, y1. And this point out here is gonna be x1. And xy is on the line. Now this would be any xy on the line. Okay, if I do my triangle construction, I get x2 minus x1 down here, that's my run. I get y2 minus y1 here, that's my rise. And it's not y2 because this doesn't have two on it. This is not an x2, y2, it's just a general xy. So I take off the subscript two. <coughs> and the equation is still true. If xy is on the line, then the slope from here to there is m, whatever m has to be, happens to be. And m in this case is y minus y1 over x minus minus of subscript x1. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, if you understand this picture, you can understand all of this in such a way that you're much more likely to be able to apply this and use it and understand what it's telling you. And, you know, I swear the camera keeps moving. Okay. Anyhow, here's the picture. And now we can write out the formula. We don't need much room. We need a little more than I have left, so let me. Actually, I saw the boundaries that I wanted to change. Okay, that should give me enough room. Okay, so you get y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, so that y minus y1, okay? Well, if this is my x1, y1, that would be y minus negative five, right? In other words, we use this point as my, our y1, our x1, y1. We get y minus negative pi equals m times x minus negative three. So we get y minus five equals slope, which we found was seven fifths of x minus x y plus five, x plus three. Y minus negative five is y plus five, x minus negative three is x plus three, and the slope we found from the two points is seven fifths. Now that might seem a little complicated, so I think it's fine if for the first few problems you do this, you just plug into the formula, okay? Pick one of your two points and let that be x1, y1, 
find the slope, and I do recommend you draw a picture on the slope if it's possible. Uh, sometimes you know what the slope is. You don't need a picture, but in this case, you do. So you plug in the slope, and you just go to this formula, and then you stop and think about what it means. Try to reason it out from meaning at the very beginning. Now, I'm saying this because you've used this formula to do the homework, okay? And you've pretty much done this. You pick one of the points, you plug it in, and you get the equation, and maybe even solve for y, okay? But here's what it all means. Now, try to get the mean. Again, the problem most pre-calculus students have is they're so used to using formulas, they haven't learned to think. I'm trying to get you to learn to think here. Uh, to improve, I obviously you can think, but uh, to improve your ability to think. All right, now that's more detail than you probably really want, uh, but I won't say it's necessarily more than uh, you would benefit from. Okay, now I'm going to Move the camera a little bit. So won't you go off the edge of the earth there? Okay. Now let's go to the third problem. Okay. And I'll cut some of the interpretation off at the beginning. I'm just going to use a formula for this one. Then again, I'm going to try to reinforce what the formula means. Here, negative 2, 6. Slope 1 half. So, M equals 1 half. X1, Y1 equals negative 2, 6. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Anytime you write down this formula, and you should be writing it down from memory by the time you get to the, at least, yeah. at least by the time you get halfway through the problem set, you should know this formula at least temporarily by memory. And by the time you come into class, I sh you, you shouldn't have to refer to notes or anything to this formula, okay? If you're going to use the formula, as you probably will. But when you write down the formula, remind yourself of what it means. It just means that if I divide both sides by x minus x1, I get the expression for slope. y minus y1 over x minus x1. We call the second point xy instead of x2, y2, but it's identical, in other words, to the formula for the slope, and you really want to keep connecting that. Okay, anyhow, one way or another, let's just do the mechanics. You identify what the slope is, there's L. You identify the coordinates of a point. If you just got one point, then that's it. Call that X1, Y1. Sometimes you might call it X0, Y0, or whatever you call it, there's your formula. If it's X not Y not, then you put a zero there and zero. Okay. Your subscripts would be zero instead of one. So we simply plug into this equation. Now we get Y minus Y1, which is six, equals slope, which is one half, times X minus X1, X minus negative two, I'll write down here x1 equals negative 2, y1 equals 6. So we remind ourselves of where these numbers come from. And we get y minus 6 equals 1 half of x plus 2. Now we've done enough elementary algebra that we can solve this for y, and sometimes you have to do that. But here's your equation, and I think open math is attempting an equation in this form. It depends maybe on the problem. Sometimes you have to solve it for y. 
We can solve for y to get the y equals mx plus b form. We add what six to both sides. And you should take that step. I'm sort of cutting the step. I should write one minus six plus six equals this plus six. <coughs> So that by the distributive law now, one half times x plus two, quantity x plus two is one half x plus one half times two, <coughs> excuse me, plus six. Half of two is one. And now we have y equals one half x plus seven. All right, now the picture. I have to draw it kind of small, but I've got room. Okay, we have the point negative two, six. So, Here's x equals negative two. Here's y equals six. So here's the point. Negative two, six. Your slope is one half. There are things I don't like about my picture here. I'm going to anticipate all the labeling. I'm going to label my y equals six down here to give myself a little room. And I'm going to say that here's my point x1. Here's my triangle. And this side is x minus negative two. That's my run. My rise, I'm gonna to have to slump this up a little bit. Rise is y minus six. I don't have room to write run and rise here, but that's what it is. And I'll label my point x, y, but I'm gonna have to put that. Maybe here. That's my point x, y. Okay. So, What's my slope? Rise divided by run. Y minus six over X plus two. If I solve this for Y, the first thing I'll do is multiply by X plus two, and I'll get Y minus six equals M times X plus two. Here's Y minus six. Here's my slope M times X plus two. Uh, so there it is. Basically, I understand how this picture gives you this. The picture is very important. Okay. Now, I'm not going to draw pictures for the next two. We'll just focus on what it means for a line to be parallel or perpendicular. Okay. Lines are parallel, they have the same slope. The 
So we need a line through five, negative three with a slope of two. And I should have probably said this earlier, since y equals two x plus seven, as slope two. Thus, y minus y1, y minus negative three in this case, is two times the quantity x minus five because here's y1, Y1 is clearly negative three, X1 is five. There we have it. We get Y plus three equals two times the quantity X minus five. If necessary, it's easy to solve this for Y to get your slope intercept form. Find out where your intercept is and it's a good idea to do that. Again, there's a picture that goes with this. I really recommend you to visualize or preferably quickly sketch that picture, just like this one, but you know, some different numbers. Okay, five. Perpendicular. implies a negative reciprocal slope. Well, y equals one third x plus five has slope one third. The required slope is negative three over one. Just take the reciprocal, change its sign. And of course, that's just negative three. Okay, point is x1, y1 equals negative four, negative two. So y minus negative two equals slope negative three times x minus negative four. Right here's y one, right here's x one, right here's the slope. You know, y plus two equals negative three times the quantity x plus two perpendicular, not perpendicular, perpendicular. Yeah, I don't know how to spell it right. I, I left the C out. And I've got a bad with the C, but there it is. Spell it right. Okay. Um, so again, there's a picture that goes with this. And I'm not going to actually go through the details of constructing these graphs, but a line through five, negative three, with a slope of one half. Here's five, negative three, and slope one half. I'll indicate that by putting the one half in brackets here. Okay. Um, and then the line y equals 2x plus 7. Okay. 
I'm reading the board at an angle here, and I've got the wrong number. So if there's one half, it's supposed to be two. So let's make it look like the slope is two. Okay. So you got the point five three. Slope two. The rise is twice as big as the rise. I didn't throw it quite steep enough, but there it is. Okay. Uh, and it's five negative three. And then up here somewhere else, you got the line y equals two x plus seven. This line has equation y plus three equals two times the quantity x minus five. <clears throat> if you solve for y, I'm writing this really small, but y would equal two x minus 16. Can't be right. That might not have put some sign. Okay. Now, if x equals 5, you get 10 minus 13, which gives you negative 3. Okay. So just to label this line, this is y equals negative 2x two x minus 13. Okay. This equation that you usually get by solving the one we got for y. Down here, you have a line through negative four, negative two. Now, wherever, I don't, haven't drawn the X and Y axis, I'm just drawing the two lines. Point is, the two lines are parallel, and this one's quite a bit higher than this. If you let X equal five, you get 17 up here. So this point would be five, negative three, point directly above it would be five, 17. So this thing's about uh, 20 units higher than this one. Okay, this line, has a slope of one third. And the line perpendicular to, you make a line at a right angle to this one, so that this angle is 90 degrees. And this would be, well, I can solve this for y. You're gonna get negative three x, and you're going to get negative 12, but then you're going to subtract two more, so it's minus 14. Might be a little hard to read, but y equals negative 3x minus 14. This point is negative 4, negative 2. If you plug in negative 4, you're going to get 12. 12 minus 14 is negative 2. So this line, if x is negative 4, does give you y equals 2. So it definitely goes through this point. Now, this line as well, um, actually, I'm just going to say it. Uh, this line is parallel to that line y equals one third x minus five. This isn't the line y equals one third x minus five because that line doesn't go through this point. But this has got a slope of one third. Okay, and I want to illustrate the fact that your slopes are negative reciprocals. If I draw that triangle up here, you can just switch the rise and the run in a way that makes it clear why this is so. So you might maybe want to think about that a little bit. In any case, the key is, if you know that a line is parallel to this line, you know it has the same slope. If you know it's perpendicular to a line, it's got the negative reciprocal slope. Okay? So just identify the slope of this line, take the negative reciprocal. Identify the slope of this line and just use it to do what you did up here. Okay? So if we look at what we have, if we have a point <clears throat> and the y-intercept, then what do we know? Well, 
the line is going to have equation y equals mx plus b. This form works just fine because if we know the y-intercept, we know what b is. Okay, then if we go through the point two five, we can take the point zero negative three and the point two five and figure out what the slope is. Slope is four. So we just plug it in and there we have it. So once we have the slope four, we don't have to think about all this right away, but we just cut to the chase and do this. And I think everybody kind of did that on the first problem. Now, again, you want to think about picture. You want to think about why the formula works for the slope. The picture works for the slope. Both ways we get the same slope, so we plug the slope in for m. All right, the second problem, we're given two points. We want to find the line. Well, we've got two points. We can find the slope. We can use the formula. We can use the picture. Here's the picture. Gives us this. The formula gives us the same thing. <coughs> so we go in slope-intercept form. Okay. Um, slope-intercept point slope form. Point is x1, y1. The equation is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We figured the slope two ways, it's seven fifths. So M is going to be seven fifths. We've got Y1, we've got X1. We plug in Y1 here, we plug in X1 here. Be careful about the signs. There we have an equation. So now that we know the point slope form, and hopefully we can understand why the point slope form is what it is. It's a fairly simple picture, but it's kind of a conceptual chunk. Okay, it's something you want to keep thinking about if you want to understand it. Um, then we're given a point and a slope. Well, that's pretty much what we did here, but first we have to find the slope. This one is actually a little easier than this in the sense that we can just plug in the slope. So here we got the form, M is going to be the slope y1 and x1 are going to be the y and x coordinates of the point, and there we get it. And then we can solve for y, we did that. <coughs> and here we have a picture that explains, again, what this form is really telling us. Now we go to parallel with the same slope. Well, it's the same situation, except that we have this equation to read the slope from has to have the same slope as this equation. So we just do the same thing we did here, but now with a slope of two and the point five, negative three. So y1 is negative three, x1 is five, and the slope is two. Here, we've got a negative reciprocal slope on this problem um, because the slope of this is one third, the slope of the line perpendicular is negative reciprocal. Got to remember that and got to practice it. Got to do several problems so we don't lose it before we take a test on it, okay? So there it is. Um, this line has slope one third, so the slope we need is the negative reciprocal, which is negative three. X1, Y1 is negative four, negative two. Now we just plug it into the formula, and then we kind of get a picture, okay? I didn't draw a picture depicting that line. Um, it would be, uh, quite a bit lower, at least somewhat lower. If X is negative four, yeah, it's going to be about negative six and a third. Uh, so it'd be down about here. The one third X minus five line would be down about here. I draw a line parallel to that, so I can draw a line perpendicular to it. <coughs> and there it is. So my best advice, don't confine yourself to just doing the formulas. Think about what things mean and draw the pictures. It sticks much better and you sort it out much better. So remember it not only for the test, but after the test, because you have to use it again, again, and then a bunch more times, okay? Later in the course, in other courses. Very important. All right. Still too loud. She's in 
quoting down. That we're just gonna have to live with it. Okay. Now We want to find x and y if 3x plus 6y is 18 and 4x minus 2y equals 12. Now, I can show you how to do this. I can show the algebra. It's fairly simple. But we want to think about what it means. And we want to start off by doing this by simply sketching a graph on the same set of coordinate axes of both equations. So we first graph. Both equations, I should say, on the same set of axes, but I don't want to use the word. Um, so let's just set a set of axes. Okay. Now, the first equation has intercepts 6, 0, and 0, 3. Now, we learned about intercepts in the first section, so you might want to review that. I'll just say it now. <coughs> the the x-intercept occurs when y is 0. So if you let y equals 0, you get 3x equals 18, and solve that, you get x equals 6. So now x is 6, y is 0, and that satisfies the equation. The y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So you plug in 0 for x, and you get 6y equals 18. Divide both sides by 6, you get y equals 3. So that's very straightforward. OK, so we have x equals 6 here, and y is 0. And then we have y equals 3 and x equals 0. Now, having drawn those two lines, you probably want to label this point, but you're not going to because it has nothing to do with these lines. OK? This point isn't on the lines. This point is, and this point is. When, y, when x is 0, which is here, y is 3. When x is 6, y is 0. So we label these points. This point is 6, 0. This point is 0, 3. Now, for the other equation, um, your x-intercept is going to be at 3. It's going to be halfway between here and here. And your y-intercept is going to be at negative 6. <laughs> okay, so your intercepts are zero, negative six. And three zero. So you've got a line here, and you've got a line here. Now, what you do is you notice that this point. is on both lines.
And what this means is if a point is on this line, then you know that the X and Y coordinates satisfy this. If it's on this line, the X and Y coordinate work here. So now that you know a point where both of those things are true, you know approximately the values of X and Y that make both of these true. <coughs> now that's a lot to digest. So you're gonna to have to work on that and then we'll talk about it a little more next time and just what it means. But the X, Y here, again, will work on this equation because it's on, because the point's on this line. It'll work in this equation because the same point is on this line. So we estimate what the X and Y coordinates are. Now we've labeled Y equals three line. We know Y is zero here. Doesn't hurt to write Y equals zero. And we know that X is zero here and X is six here and X is three on this line. So what do you think X is here? What do you think the X coordinate is? And what do you think the Y coordinate is? Write it down. Okay, we haven't done a lot of estimates for graphs in this course. So um, uh, people are having maybe just a little trouble uh, deciding just what the question means, okay? What's the X coordinate of this? Well, is this point to the right or left of the X equals three line? Well, people tell me it's to the right. Everybody sees that. And is it to the right or left of the X equals six line? Well, it's to the left. So that means the X coordinate of this point is somewhere between three and six. Now, as I've said, I really recommend that you sketch vertical lines through any point, vertical and horizontal lines through any point that you draw. So now we estimate what we think X equals on this line, okay? So, see if we got any ideas, and then see if we can estimate what Y should equal. No, stop. Come on. Okay, we pretty much got a quick estimate now for Y. We, well, first of all, we got an estimate for X. It was X equals four. Well, it's to the right of three and to the left of six, and it's closer to three than six, so among the numbers, the whole numbers, three, four, five, six, you're gonna probably pick X equals four. Now the way I've drawn it, <coughs> I think it's maybe about 3.8, but we're not, you know, you can't see that from back the back of the room. Uh, so X equals four is a really good estimate. And actually I drew my three a little bit too big here. So I think X equals four probably works pretty well. Okay, and it's certainly for whole numbers, it's your best estimate. All right. If we draw a horizontal line through this point, well, I think Y equals one comes out pretty close. Okay. And that's exactly the estimate everybody gave. So we get Y equals one at this point. Now, if X equals four and Y equals one, X equals four, Y equals one. Check. We don't expect to be exact. Now on some of the open math, they contrived it so you can be exact and they give you grids and everything else. I really prefer that you write out your work and I see that you're, you, you are writing out work, okay? Most people here are writing out their work very nicely. Uh, Write out your work so I can see what you're doing and what you're thinking. And I recommend that you do your own sketch without doing all the grid lines. Just do a sketch kind of like what I did, that just bare bones sketch and make your estimate. Then go into open math and plot the points on the computer 
and see how close your estimate was to what you get there. And then see if you got it right. Okay, it doesn't take that long to draw this. You can slot these point lines down pretty quickly. You want to be a little careful about keeping them in about the right proportion and don't expect to be hugely right with a quickly drawn graph, but you should get something in the general ballpark. Okay, well, in any case, whatever estimate you get, okay, in open math, even if you're doing it, you know, on the, on, on the computer, uh, you want to plug those values in before you submit that problem and see if they're right. Because you submit the problem that's wrong, you lose points. And it's very easy to check. Whatever estimate you get, we plug into the first equation. Plug four and one into the first equation, and it works. Three times four is 12. Six times one is six. 12 and six is 18. I'm not going to write out all the arithmetic, but that checks. <laughs> okay, then we get 4x be 4 times 4 minus 2 times 1 equals 12. And put a little question mark on that equal sign. We don't know if it's going to equal or not. Well, it turns out not quite. We get 14, not 12, okay? But that's close. You know, consider the size of these numbers and stuff, that's a pretty good estimate, all right? If you made that estimate, I asked you to do this freehand on a, uh, on a piece of paper and you came up with that estimate, that would be totally acceptable. You could even be off by a little more than that, all right? Well, you're maybe within one plus or minus, depending on the numbers, uh, I give you credit for that estimate. And on the test, you're not going to have the computer, you're not going to have the grid, you're going to have to make your own lines. Which is another reason that you want to do that when you do the open math. Okay, I caution you to do that. Um, and I, you can be guaranteed there'll be a quiz next time that asks you to do this. I'll give you, you know, maybe two or three pairs of equations to sketch. And I want you to sketch them kind of quickly, you know, should be able to do two of them in 10 minutes, maybe three. If I give you three and you get two of them, it's going to be okay. But if you get all three, that's going to be real good. Okay? So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. And I might ask you some more of this, too. I might, like, give you two of these and one of these. It'll probably be something with parallels or perpendiculars. Make sure, because people had a little trouble with that. Um, uh, nobody got to that on the, on the quiz because it's a little slow and it's but, you know, slow but steady, you're doing the right stuff. Okay, makes sense? And that will be on the test. And I, I, I need to put it on the assignments page so just so people know the test will be in the testing center. <clears throat> Actually, since we're just covering this part, and this stuff is um, on the test. I'm going to say, uh, get my whole head talking to you here. I'm going to say that uh, test will be in the testing center on Thursday. And you'll have a week to take it. Okay. So it won't really be due till a week from Thursday. But in the meantime, you got to keep up with your assignments because they're going to be a midterm in a few more weeks. And, and uh, you know, you're going to have to keep up with these assignments. Okay, so don't just spend all your time studying for the test. I've also posted, it's already posted on your assignments page, a bunch of sample problems. Okay. And... Uh, You know, the last test I looked at was in multivariable calculus. And that's the thing that's in my memory. And of course, I'm not testing them on this. They're way beyond this. Uh, there's something there that kind of felt like simultaneous equations. I don't guarantee that you're going to have the two equations we got to graph here, but it's certainly going to be in the midterm in a few weeks. So make sure you learn how to do that. 
Uh, you can look at the problems. <clears throat> it's sample tests. I think I think there are at least you know three or four sample tests. Uh, your test will be randomly generated, the same way the sample test was. But you can see how the sample tests vary from one to the other. Okay. Uh, so you can kind of see what the variety of problems is, or the variety of things that you really do need to know. Uh, so be sure you prepare for that. Uh, but uh, I will put the test in the testing center on Thursday, and you'll have a week, one way or the other. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the count. I went too far. Not behaving. Okay.